Welcome to part two of the Loopy Pro video manual. This is a series of videos getting you up and running with Loopy Pro. And if you haven't watched the first video, go back and watch it now, and then you can dive into this one. This video is all about gestures and getting you looping, as well as overdubbing, but more importantly, getting you set up to start looping. Now before we get looping, let's talk about a new session. When you start Loopy Pro, it looks like this and you have 10 loops. But after our first video, you may have started having a mess with it and you wanna save what you've done. All you need to do is go to the top left-hand corner and you can see it's given it a name already. You can rename that, of course, by pressing the pencil and you've either got new project, save, duplicate project or export. Now for this scenario, I don't have anything in it. That's why duplicate product is grayed out, but you can just click save and it'll save it in the projects folder and you can see there's a couple of different ones there. But right now we've got a brand new project Project. And the first thing we want to talk about is timing and this leads me nicely on to the clock The clock is located at the top right hand corner Which is three little dots when you haven't got anything set now if you just start looping You can see straight away at the top it's identified this as 154 BPM now with the very first loop it identifies what the speed of that loop is and that's what that little indicator is on the very first loop the little waveform if you tap it it gives you the information of that recording and it's trying to figure out is this the right BPM if it is great but if it's not what you can do is you can instantly go divide or times so I could say divide actually it's 77 beats per minute not 154 this helps loopy pro decide what the length of loop is but also what the derivatives of those loops are half a loop quarter loop four times the loop and right next door to there you can see beats and bars so how many bars is this well actually it's 77 not 154 and I want it to be two bars. So once that's all been done, we're gonna go over to the clock. Now I've reset the session for this because I wanna show you what it looks like without anything on there. The clock in Loopy Pro can be found at the top right hand corner and it controls both your session tempo and the quantization intervals of other things like recording loops, your master loop, things like that. So let's go into it. And you can see here, we've got no loop, we've got no detection, there's nothing been decided yet. Now there's a couple of different ways you can create a tempo. One is we can tap the tempo straight away or we can just start looping and as you close the loop it'll detect that tempo. So for this instance I'm going to tap a tempo before I record something. Once I've tapped more than once which is two taps it'll dictate the space between those taps into beats per minute. One, two, so straight away, I just did two taps and it came up with 104.28. Now that's really accurate. And of course, the other thing you can do is you can make it an absolute number. So with this slider, I can actually turn around and say, well, I wanted it to be 105. This makes it really handy. And you can also use this live whilst the loop is playing and it can start time stretching your loops. It's a really great effect and it's really cool for performance. Now, the other thing you can do for the whole project is you can instantly times or divide. And that's that little times and divide next door to the slider. If I click that, I can do tempo correct. So we can divide it straight away, it's gone to 52.5. Or if we go times, then it'll go back to 105. And then if we times again, you can see it goes to 210. We'll put it back to 105. Now underneath there, we've got the bars. And one bar, or two bars, or four bars, eight, 16, or 32. And what this does is this dictates how long Loopy Pro should be recording for. I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna record one bar of hi-hats. So in this instance, I've just recorded straight from the get-go. I haven't tapped the tempo. It's figured it out at 114 BPM, and that is one bar. If I was to record on the yellow loop now, next door to the orange, it would record in exactly the same amount of time, one bar. When I tap the loop, it will set the pre-roll for recording, and it will count me in. <laughs> <laughs> As mentioned in the previous video, you can see the circles are moving around and you can see the waveform animated to really indicate that it's being played. However, I wanna create that kick and snare over two bars. So how do I do that? So let's undo our recording and then let's go back up to the clock and you can see these numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. So I'm gonna hit two, which means two bars recording. So now I'm gonna hit play and then I'm gonna record the two bar kick and snare. You can see there it's going around twice as long as the first loop. This is also indicated with the clock on the top right hand corner of how many bars you're gonna be recording. It's a simple animation, but actually it's a really great visual representation of how long you'll be recording. 
Now another way to actually change the bars really quickly is actually with the times, the divide, the plus and the minus. What this will do is exactly the same as these numbers, but you can really specify it. Let's say we're doing four bars in one, but actually doing three bars in the other. So what we can do is we can actually go to just three bars. If we hit record now, <laughs> So you can see there we've got one bar, two bar, and even three bars. So you can have as many or as little bars as you want to. Underneath the times divide plus and minus, we've got a couple of things. And this will really, really help you nail this first loop, mainly being the metronome. If you set a BPM, you can turn the metronome on. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. So this time I'm gonna bring up a new project, completely blank. So we've got a brand new project and I'm gonna set the timing myself by tapping it. Now you may notice before I start tapping it, you can see the detection range is between 50 to 210 beats per minute, but also underneath that, it says round to the closest BPM. This works if you're gonna create your first loop and it'll just round it off to the closest BPM. So for example, if it was 77.23, it'll just be 77. If it was 77.89, it'll go to 78. However, if you tap the tempo to begin with, it won't actually round it up until you use the slider. One, two. So we can see there it's 95.95. So I'm gonna scroll it over to 95. I've turned the metronome on, and next door to that you can see this circle with lines. And what that is, is a flashing metronome. If you're photosensitive, please be aware of this because it will obviously flash the screen of the iPad or the iPhone. So now if I tap a loop, it says it's waiting for the clock to start. That's because it's waiting for the BPM to kick in so I can then record the loop. So let's hit play at the top. And you can see it's flashing. If you're on stage, this is a fantastic visual representation, certainly in a dark environment, but if you don't need the flash and you just need the clock, you can turn the flash off. Also where the clock is, you can see where we are in the loop. So you can see it's three, four, one, two, three, four, you can see where you're gonna come in because 12 o'clock is the start of the loop. At any time I can turn the metronome off and turn it back on again if I need it. Last couple of things with the clock. You can reset it and that'll reset all the timing elements of it. So it's ready to figure out a new BPM. You have four, four, and you can see here, you've actually got loads of different ones you can do and you can update the tempo on this. We can go three, four, we can go six, eight. We've got 10, eight, there's absolutely loads. And finally, if you need to make any more adjustments to the metronome or the synchronization of Loopy Pro with other devices, this is where you'll click the gear icon on the bottom right-hand corner of the clock. We've got metronome and all the different things to do with the metronome including different sounds. And you can adjust the volume and the audio interface channel of where it's going out to. With synchronization, it's all to do with external devices, Ableton Link, MIDI, and so much more that we'll cover in another video. Now, Loopy Pro is so many different things, but at its core, it's a looper. If you haven't played with the tempo beforehand, like tapping the tempo or getting the tempo from an external device into Loopy Pro, then you'll know this because the clock in the top right hand corner has three little lines. It doesn't have a number next to it. But Loopy Pro was built for touch. So a single tap on a loop when there's no clock set will start the loop automatically and start recording automatically. A second single tap will stop that recording, but the session will carry on. Again, I'm just gonna record some hi-hats. So it's figured out the BPM, I've tapped it, and it's carrying on on its own. But one little tip to let you be aware of, it starts recording when you release your finger. So most people tap, and I tap as well, but actually when you release, so if you hold down, nothing will actually happen, you'll just see the loop go a little bit bigger. But when you release, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. That's when it actually kicks in. Now there's a couple of things we can do. A single tap, whether you've got one loop, will start the session and unmute that loop. What? Two, three, four, what? If I tap before we get back to 12 o'clock, two, three, it cues it out. Almost like a count in and a count out. If I've got another loop going, what? Two, four, what? Two, four, what? Two. So we've got two loops going. If I just tap this one, that one will mute, but the other one will carry on. 
the session hasn't stopped because we've got more than one loop active. When you stop the last loop, that's when the session stops. And you can tell that because the play button at the top changes from play to pause. Now as I tap a loop in and out, it's counting it in and counting it out. If I do it right on 12 o'clock, it goes straight away. So your timing for actually tapping the loop is kind of important. Now this pre-rolling in and pre-rolling out is called preset. And it's also dictated by the length of the bar that we've got in the clock. So we can see there it says one bar and we've got two, four, six, eight, as I described before. Now there's a number of different ways you can actually adjust the counting in the clip settings, which we'll go into in a more advanced video. If you set a BPM and then start recording, then what you're doing is you're setting that timing and recording to that constraint. The alternative is free looping, which is predominantly what I do and what I've been doing in this session, which is just go for it, just tap it and it'll start recording and then it'll figure out the BPM as you go along. But if you're struggling to do free and you're struggling with your timing, then and using things like the tap tempo and presetting the session before you hit record is really, really gonna help you. And it doesn't take too long. Let me show you an example of setting up the recording really quickly and recording our first loop. So we have a completely empty track here. One, two, three. Okay, so we're gonna go with that, turn that on. Now, if you're happy with the loop, you can then turn the metronome off and it feels a lot more freer. Maybe you want to keep that metronome on. Maybe you've got the hi-hat sound or you've got a different sound that you actually like and incorporate into your session. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do with the loop as well. And the next one is overdubbing. Overdubbing is where you record on top of the original loop and you can just keep going and add layers on top of the original recording. Of course, you don't have to do this with Loopy Pro, you can just add more loops, but it can get very confusing, certainly if you've got a massive project. But the great thing about that is you do have separation of all the separate loops. So how do you do overdubbing? Overdubbing is very simply a two finger tap as opposed to a one finger tap. So whilst we're playing, we actually do a two finger tap. So I'm gonna play this session and then I'm gonna record some vocals and add some harmonies on the same loop. <laughs> So we have our first one, two finger tap. Now overdubbing will carry on until you tell it to do otherwise, it won't automatically close. So as it's recording, a single tap will actually tell it to start closing it off. And if you wanna close it off really quickly, you can tap it a second time and it'll close off in that instant. Let's give you another example where I'm gonna create the beat all on one loop. <laughs> You can very quickly build up loops with overdubbing because it just keeps recording until you tell it to do otherwise. So in this example, I've got a couple of different loops actually recorded. Now I wanna show you a couple of gestures that you can do with each loop. First of all, if you swipe really quickly on a loop, it deletes it. So be careful with this, but you can undo that if you do make a mistake. However, if you swipe left, right, or down slowly, then what will happen is it'll give you the option to either clear that recording or re-record it. And this will also happen while the project is playing. So you could re-record something live right in that moment if you made a mistake. If you swipe upwards, you get the loop settings. This is an independent menu for each individual loop or one shot. Here we can see the length of the loop and you can change that. You can see the volume, the balance, the pitch, and the speed. If you swipe down a little bit, you can even rename this loop. It's called clip one by default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call it drums. You'll now see on the bottom of that loop, it actually says drums in the bottom of that circle. This is really useful, certainly if you've got a lot of loops. At the very top, I can hit play and it'll play. Next up to that, you've got divide, extend, and multiply. Divide will literally divide this loop in half. <laughs> and it can get pretty intense. Extend will actually do the opposite of this and give you a blank space. So if I hit extend, it will double the space, but it won't double the loop. This gives you room to record more things if you wanted to, whereas multiply will double the loop. And this will actually give you the same loop, but twice the length. Mm. 
Imagine you created a one bar hi-hat, and then you realize the kick and snare is actually two bars, but you want it on the same loop. You multiply the hi-hat so it's double the length, and then you can record your kick and snare. Next door to multiply is a down arrow and an up arrow. This is importing a loop and exporting the loop. You can export every single loop that you've made, and you can import to any of these circles as well. And finally, we've got the color, and we'll go into color organization in another video. But the menu doesn't stop there. As you can see, if you scroll this down, there's a couple of other things you can do as well, including phase locked and free. If you're creating soundscapes, then this is really, really handy to have it in free mode and it completely ignores the BPM system. Phase locked means that it is actually locked to the session. And then you've got loop and also play once. So you can turn a loop into a one shot. So as we hit play, <laughs> you can see it automatically stops without me touching anything. There's playback settings and there's record settings. And then also it says, if you do make changes to the playback and record settings, this will override the orange group configuration and the global clip settings. And this is the same for every single loop, no matter which color it is. So if I went to the blue one and swiped up, you've got all the information there as well. Now there's two other gestures I wanna show you with a loop. And the first one is twist. Let's say it's a little bit out of sync. And what we can do is we can use our thumb and forefinger to twist, or if you wanna use your two fingers like that, you can as well and you can twist and start moving the loop around depending on where you need it. You can do this live in the session while other things are playing and it won't affect the others at all. The other gesture takes a little bit of practice, but it's actually to adjust the volume. Now you can do this in the mixer. I'm gonna be talking about the mixer because it's really important in another video. But what you can do is if you drag your finger around the loop, as in following the curvature of the loop, then what can happen is when you do this, you get to a certain point, you can change the output of the volume. So as you can see here, we can go all the way up to 24 dB, which is really loud and it's normally set at zero. As soon as you let go, the loop spins back around and it's back to normality. Now, the last thing I wanna show you with gestures is actually not really a gesture, it's more of a move. And this is actually merging loops. As you can see here, we've got three loops that are vocals. I'm gonna turn the beat off. I'm gonna move my finger around so we can actually adjust the loop. So I'm just gonna bring this one down a little bit and I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit as well. There we go. So I've got the loops how I want them, but what I wanna do is I wanna put those three loops as one loop. Now, if you do this too quickly, you'll actually erase the loop. So if I swipe and move from one loop to another, it'll actually erase it like so. But if you very slowly move your finger from one to the other, you'll see that the loop can be moved and it can be moved to a different location, including on top of another loop. Now, the trick with this is you have to hold your finger down about a second, second and a half, and you'll see the loop get bigger. But if you hold down, and then move, you can see, I'm gonna move this over to the green one. It's making this really weird uh, animation, but it's really obvious that it's gonna be merging those together. Well, I'll let go, they're now together. I'm gonna to bring this one over as well. And they're all under one loop. Just be aware that when you merge loops, they're gonna be merged at the volume that you've set. So if they're all at zero dB, they'll all be merged together like that. I'd highly recommend get the volume of that loop right first before you move it over, and that way you're gonna have a nice mix. Now there's loads more things you can do for recording, including retrospective recording, intros and tails, and we're gonna be going into that in a later video. But the next video is all about gear, and we're gonna talk about audio interfaces, microphones, the hardware, and the adapters that you're gonna to need to plug into an iPhone or an iPad to get you up and running and make it sound really professional.